So on this video, we're gonna lower the truck. That's the plan, at least. Um, and do a little bit more tune up work. So this thing is 31 and a quarter to right there in the front. And it's 32 and a quarter at the back, so it's an inch higher in the back. So we're gonna probably cut the front coils. We may buy drop spindles, maybe. And we're probably gonna flip the rear end from the bottom of the leaf spring to the top. So that's the plan. So here's what we're doing first. I took the two three quarter bolts loose or nuts loose here. Had a stack of shims on each side, which I guess is typical. We're gonna put, I'll probably put a bunch, stack a bunch of washers in here because I know it's gonna need more, uh, what was that positive camber when I lower it. So took that loose, unbolted this brake line from the side of the control arm, took the lower shock bolt loose. So now we're gonna try to kick the uh, factory spring out of here and uh, we're gonna cut one round off of it. And I actually just ordered the uh, drop spindles on the uh, eBay. So that's what we're gonna do next. So I thought I had it where it could droop all the way down by just unhooking this and this. Then I realized the sway bar was limiting me. So I took, took that loose. It's 9 16 bolts here, took that loose. So hopefully that'll let me get this spring. All right, so we got it out. That sway bar was holding me. So, we're probably gonna cut, I don't know, we'll see. We'll probably cut a cool and a half, like, um, we'll probably cut it like there. We'll probably try a cool and a half. All right, so that spring's a whole lot easier to put in when you cut a cool and a half off of it. So, uh, there you go, we're gonna, See how I put it all back together and see how much it lowered it. So we got it all back together here. We got our shot bolt back in, got our coil in, got our sway bar back on, put this bolt back in the brake thing. We put washers back in where those shims were because I know it's going to need a little more. We add like one extra washer. And uh, I ended up cutting this much off the bump stop because, you know, that bump stop's really tall. So now we just gotta do the exact same thing to the other side and see uh, what, how much that lowered it, that, cutting that coil and a half. So we got the other side put back together exactly the same, coil and a half. Cut the bump stop. Let's see how low this thing goes. It'll settle once you drive it some. Those shocks are wore out. What was our measurement before? You may remember? So 31 and 32. We're gonna find the measuring tape. So we were 31 and a quarter, now we're 28. So that's uh, one, two. Right now it's about three inches lower. So that's, if we put the drop spills on, I think they're another two and a half. So that would put us right about where I want it to be. So we'll have to have to do this, get an alignment done on it. So we got the front. All we can do till we get the drop spindles, now we're gonna flip the rear end on the leaf springs to the top. All right, so we got it turned around now. We're gonna start working on the rear end. And uh, so the plan is to move this rear axle from the bottom side of these leaf springs over to the top, which means I'm gonna have to weld another one of these uh, pads on there on the bottom and um, probably take those bump stops off, it looks like. They're gonna be right in my way. So we're gonna start doing that now. And uh, I think this is supposed to lower it about five inches from what I understand. So it should be perfect. Okay, so I got the uh, all the nuts off these U-bolts and took all that off. So now I'm taking this one off. My impact ran these two off fine, but the front two, I don't know if the threads are messed up or it's rusty. So we're, we've are we been uh, trying to get this one off with a big ratchet and a pop. So this one's super hard to get loose for some reason, but we, we'll get it. We got the rear end totally loose from the leaf springs. And I've never done this before, but uh, 
to keep from having to take the brake hoses loose and drive shaft and shocks, I'm gonna see if I can just unbolt the uh, leaf spring bolts, pull that leaf out and sit it under the bottom without having to take all that loose. So we'll see if that works. Okay, we got the bolts out. We had to knock them out with a uh, chisel. So there's that out. Now we gotta do the same thing the other side and we're gonna cut these bump stops off. Yeah. Okay, so now that we got the rear end all out, uh, we went to AutoZone and I got some spark plug wires, cap and rotor, and some AutoLot 25s. Uh, you always want to drop them before you install them. And then this is our new spring perches, spring seat, whatever you want to call it. They have these at Tractor Supply. AutoZone doesn't have them for some reason. So you go to Tractor Supply and look on like the trailer aisle. And uh, that's for a three inch uh, tube axle housing. So we're going to weld these in place and put it back together. And once we get it all lowered down, then we're gonna work on the tune up stuff. After okay, that. so this is what I came up with to put these spring perches on the exact same uh, angle for my pinion angle. Uh, I just come up with this off the top of my head. I don't know if other people do it this way, but we put, we put two of these squares on there and then lined them up with each other like this to, to make sure they were dead even. When they were dead even, I knew the top and pad and the bottom pad of this rear end were like exactly the same. And then we just eyeballed the width. So it's probably at the right spot. So that's what we're gonna do, we're gonna weld it. All right, so we got those spring perches welded on at the, the same angle the old ones were. Now we're gonna put the springs back underneath it and uh see what it looks like sitting down all right so we got our u-bolts on there with our new saddles i figured out that this shock bolt is hitting this u-bolt for the rear end so we got to do something different there um and it wouldn't let me sit that other one up on the leaf spring in the right spot it's acting like the drive shaft's too long so we unhooked it for now we're gonna tighten these u-bolts down Put some pressure on the rear end and get all the weight on these leaf springs and then we're going to go back and tighten all these bolts down and then we'll check and see if we got to shorten this drive shaft all right so now we have put the weight back on the axle we can see how much closer to the frame it is how far up in there it is and we have the shocks unbolted because of that shock bolt issue we've got the drive shaft still out of it but we got the weight on it so i'm going to tighten these bolts and this bolt while i've got the uh, leaf springs where they're going to be and we got to figure out how to lower this thing because now our rear end's five inches higher where our jack doesn't go that high so we got a piece of metal under there right now so as you can see our shock bolt is running right into that plate so my my fix is i got i think it's a half inch bolt i think this is a 7 16 bolt and it's about an inch shorter so I'm going to use these bolts so it doesn't run into it like that. I uh, already put the one in the other side. And we got a bird's nest back here. Look at that. Who knew? No eggs in it, so hopefully we didn't kill a family of birds. That would have been bad. So we're going to put these shock bolts in and see if our drive shaft is uh, going to be a mess. Okay, so the drive shaft is just about an inch too long so we are gonna have to uh cut this bad boy down unfortunately so we got the drive shaft pulled out of there we're gonna cut it down and uh put it back together so we got this enormously long drive shaft out and i took my cordless cutoff tool and uh cut right at the edge of the weld so now i'm going to try to slide this part out the cast iron part out cut probably an inch or inch and a half out of this thing slide back in and weld it so we measured an inch and a half from here we scribed a line around it so i'm going to cut it now with my cordless cutoff wheel and then clean this up to bare metal 
and clean this up to bare metal right here and weld it on there. So this guy is just barely bigger than that uh, drive shaft is. So I got Ralphie heating it up and we're gonna see if we can get that to expand enough for this to go in there and uh, not have to beat it to death or make a cut. All right, so we got it welded. Hopefully it's straight, hopefully it's balanced. <laughs> I just lined the lines back up where it was so it's oriented the same way it used to be. We cut that inch and a half off of it right there. That should be right. Hey, the little star that ran 590s with a drive shaft just like this, so it'll be fine. Okay, so we got it in there. Uh, you probably could just cut one inch off of it. I probably went a half inch too much. And uh, so now we're going to set the wheels on this thing and finally, finally, after several hours, set it back on the ground. So we got the wheels on there, got the drive shaft in. My jack doesn't work right. Let's see what it looks like. Needs new shocks. Man, it's just more even than I thought it was. Alright, let's measure it. Where's the measure tape now? It's, it's, on, it's right here on the toolbox, baby. So it was 32 and a quarter before. With the axle flip, it is right at 27 and a quarter. So, one, two, three, four, five inch. So, axle flip drops at five inches on this truck. So now we just need to drive it and see if it rubs. So we got all the plug wires off, got all the old plugs out. Uh, they seem better days, I'll tell you right now. They are nasty. Uh -uh. They're hideous. Uh, the thing smokes, so, you know, I guess it just took a lot of oil, I don't know. Look at that, golly. Well, we got one cylinder here, it's, Running halfway decent, so I'd say that one ought to help us out. So we're gonna put these new uh, top of the line Auto Lot 25s in it and uh, see how that helps it. So here's our old rotor. Look how corroded it is inside there. Where them electrodes are, it's really corroded. And then our rotor buttons here. Look at the difference between the new and the old. Look how that edge is totally worn off. So it might change our darn ignition timing with that much of a change in how it connects. So we're gonna change all this out and see how it runs. So you gotta switch all the cool out, take it out of the old distributor cap into the new one. It has like a little ground strap, the center one that goes up under the coil, then these two wires. You gotta pull them out with like needle nose pliers or something. And then put all this uh, coil back in the new cap. All right, so we finally got all the plugs in, all the wires, the cap and rotor in. It's crazy it doesn't come with a new cover for the cool. So um, I got seven plug wires on because AutoZone shorted me a plug wire in the box. So we gotta get one more plug wire. So I just reuse one of the old ones. But the new plugs and stuff should really help. We got it all back together. So now we're gonna pull it outside and maybe take her for a spin and see if anything rubs. took the uh, breather off the truck. I should have videoed it, but this was like solid black and I thought it was paint. Apparently it was just a bunch of oil. And uh, same thing here, this is all solid black. So we degreased it, washed it out. I think I'm gonna cut this flap out of here to give it more donkeys. But uh, I'm gonna take this to work and clean the rust off of uh, this thing and prime it and paint it, make it look better. So here's the finished product on the breather. I stripped this thing to bare metal with a, uh, I don't know, whatever kind of wheel we use at work to strip it down to bare metal. Uh, we call it Afro wheel. And then uh, stripped it down to bare metal. I treated it with that 
acid stuff you've seen me use before. Let that sit for 24 hours, then I etch primed it and then trim blacked it. You can buy like a trim black, I can't remember the brand name, but that's what they call it, is trim black. So then, uh, did the same thing to this deal. And me being me, I couldn't leave it alone. It had this ugly diaphragm on here, which controls, ooh, which controls this flap inside here that when that flap closes, it lets exhaust come up through this hole in the bottom to run off just hot air when the uh, engine's warming up. So I couldn't have that anymore. So I welded this flap shut and took the pipe off the exhaust and then cut this bracket off here, which held the diaphragm on. Then I had to make a little patch panel to go in here and weld this hole up. There was a slot here, I welded up and I ground down the spot welds there and then trimmed like this thing. So now it uh, is a lot smoother looking and doesn't have that ugly diaphragm on it. So we're just gonna cap the vacuum line off and, and call it good. So, and today we got the drop spindles in the mail. So hopefully these Chinese two and a half inch drop spindles uh, will make this thing uh, look even lower than what it is now. So it just moves the position of this right here up from, I guess it's down here, it moves it up two and a half inches, which moves the wheel up on the suspension, which lowers the body down. It doesn't change any of your, uh, you know, angles of your control arms or how the vehicle rides. So that's why we did that. So we're gonna do that, see how it looks, see if we feel like we need to lower the back anymore. Now we can just block the back since we've already flipped the uh, rear end on the springs. So let's get started. All right, so we're back here again in sleeveless. <laughs> and so we got the stock uh, stuff off there. Uh, you just gotta take the tie rod loose and the lower ball joints. And then the best way I've found to, oh, and the caliper. The best way I've found to get them loose because they always stick is to smack this thing with a hammer like right there about 700 times. That's what that's for. And she'll eventually come loose. So, so this for the factory height spindle. And this is like a two and a half inch drop spindle. So you can see the, the difference in the position, how this is two and a half inches lower in the factory one. So we're gonna, we got the rotor and back and plate and everything off of it. We're gonna put all that on there, put it all back on the car or the truck <laughs> and see, see how this thing looks. So if you have a ball joint that is spinning when you're trying to put the nut on it, the best thing you can do is get like a floor jack and put pressure, cause that's a tapered, you know, bolt or whatever you want to call it on the ball joint. And if you can put pressure against it with a jack and shove it up in there to where that taper bottoms out and has pressure against it, a lot of times it'll stop turning and you can tighten the nut. If you don't do that, it'll just spin all night. All right, so I don't know what the deal is. You buy the, the cheapest one on Amazon you could get. And uh, for some reason this brake line here, this metal line that comes off the caliper runs right into the upper ball joint. So I'm gonna try to bend this brake line down without kinking it and see if that will, it won't even let me slide it on all the way cause it's running right into that. So I gotta bend this down. I wanna see if I can do that now. So a couple hours later and a few gallons of sweat, we got it back together. Um, so now you might can understand how it works. It moves, this used to be down here. The center line of this used to be down here. So it moves this up. Um, so we got all our, our two ball joints bolted back in with the cotter pins in them. We got the tie rod bolted back up with the cotter pin, the brake line bolt back in tight. I took the shock bolt loose, but I actually didn't have to do that. So I can leave that out on the other side. So we're gonna go to the other side. I put some new grease in this and you wanna tighten that, that nut up on the spindle, like tighten it down tight and then back it off like, you know, a quarter of a turn or something. Just give it a little bit of, it needs to not be super tight. So. We're gonna go to the other side and do the same thing now. Well, so we've run into our second problem. First of all, like I just showed you, we bent that, that brake line down to where it would clear the upper ball joint. We're gonna put these, 
15 inch factory looking wheels on it and it's running right into it so I'm planning on buying wheels for the truck but I wasn't planning on buying them today so we might try just a little tiny wheel spacer because it looks like it's just barely touching actually the wheels bolted down you can barely spin it it's under pressure with this so uh, we may try a wheel spacer and see if that works. If not, uh, we're gonna have to change the wheels uh, sooner than we thought with this thing. So we got the other side done. There's the greasy old uh, factory spindle. So we got the new one on here. Um, we figured out how to make the wheel fit. So if you see right here on the lower control arm, I cut this bottom lip that stuck out. That's what was hitting the wheel. So. We cut the other side, it clears, so this side should clear too. So the only two modifications if you're running factory wheels and stuff you should have to do is you'll have to cut this so it doesn't hit your wheel and you have to bend this brake line over out of the way of the uh, upper ball joint location. So that's the only two modifications we had to do. So we're gonna put the wheels back on it, lower it down and see how low this thing is. All right, so we're gonna lower this thing down. We got all the front end back on it. And uh, we're gonna lower it down and see how low it is with the drop spindles and a cool and a half cut. <laughs> okay, our jack won't come out. All right, we'll fix the jack issue and come back to it. We got our other jack over there. Now let's see what it looks like. It'll settle a little bit. Oh my gosh, it's low. It was 27 inches before, I believe. Now we're at, that's 25 and a half. That thing will probably settle even more then. Uh, yeah, we're low. We're three inches off the ground at the, at the uh, control arm. And we're four inches off the ground at the cross member. So that's about as low as you can go and drive it anywhere. That thing's still gonna drag on speed bumps. Let's let's drive it and make it settle. Okay, so the back measures 27 to the lip. This measure is 25. And uh we went to drive it down the road and soon figured out that uh the top of the tire is hitting the uh the inner fender so it looks like we're going to, have to do something about the inner fenders uh because lowering it this much you know it's, it's lowered like i think it's five and a half inches lower than what it was it looks really good it looks good sitting there like that but it uh, really needs the front inner fenders taken out i don't think it needs to be lower in the back i think it has about a two inch rake and i kind of like the way that looks so we're gonna see what we have to do here about these inner fenders to where we can uh, actually drive it. So we got both the inner fenders out. You can see now, we don't have much space still between there and the fender, but uh, it's a lot better than what, what it was. So we're gonna tie some stuff out of the way. I gotta figure out a different way to mount this overflow jug. We had to put the spare, uh, the jack and the tools for the lug wrench stuff over here in the pile. But uh, we're gonna tie some of these wires and hoses and stuff up and then see about driving it. So here it is done, we just drove it. Uh, with those inner fenders out, it's still rubbing just a little bit on the driver's side. So, uh, you know, like I said, we're probably gonna change wheels and tires anyway, but um, it does rub just a little bit. So if you're running this, those are 235, 75, 15s on uh, truck rallies. But anyway, there you go. That's a uh, coil and a half off the front. 
and uh, two and a half inch drop spindles from China. They were like $215. And then that's uh, flipping the rear axle. So that was $15 to do that. And this was 215. So for $230, uh, we lowered the back five inches and we lowered the front like five and a half or six inches. So that's what it looks like. We're gonna keep piddling with this truck. Uh, you'll probably see another video on it unless we sell it. It needs some more uh, work done to the interior and some some bit more detail work done to it. So that's where we're gonna end this one off though and we'll see you next time.